Happy Thursday, Trivia Nation! You in a good mood with the weekend approaching? It's just hours away now. This world throws everything at us, but we still make it again. And well done. Well done indeed. <laughs> yeah. How many of you have been vaccinated? We're so glad it's finally happening and that the health workers and the vulnerable are first in line. Plus, after a few more weeks playing it safe, the general public should get their turn. So hang in there! In the meantime, we'll keep throwing out the hard questions like we always do. A dozen a day, culling the herd until only the champions emerge at the top of the heap and split the $5,000 prize pot. Now that's a lot of cheddar to make you feel better. Ooh, wait. And for even bigger thrills, you can grab a VIP ticket. That puts you in line for the exclusive, elusive VIP pot of $1,500. As long as 100 people buy in, we will do that. But hurry up, because ticket sales stop at 150. Don't let somebody else grab your ticket. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as always, we have picked another great charity that the H community told us about. Tonight, it's Thorn, building technology to defend children from sexual abuse. The growth of the internet has led to an increase in child sexual abuse. Today, the problem is complex and still growing. So Thorne develops tools and products that accelerate the recovery of child victims and empowers youth to navigate the complexities of a growing, growing up in a digital world. Their work helps with victim identification, speeding the rescue of children, removing explicit material from servers, and empowering the public to create a world where children can be safe, curious, and happy. So, we're thanking Thorne for their valuable work and making a donation while we're at it. Here's their online giving manager, Lauren, with a few words. Take it away. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm the online giving manager here at Thorne. Thorne is a nonprofit that develops technology to defend children from sexual abuse. With the world's largest technical team solely dedicated to this issue, we develop software and interventions to end child sex trafficking and the creation and spread of child sexual abuse material on the internet. Together with our supporters, we are building what we believe, a world where every child can simply be a kid. This is about more than technology. This is about transforming the way we protect our children. We hope you'll join us. Thank you so much, Lauren. You all can learn more at thorn.org. It's right here. They offer many ways you can donate to their work. So look them up and hook them up. All right, are you ready to grab some axes and start chipping away at this California redwood and see which way it falls? Take a deep breath. Because this is the moment to prepare the nerd center of your brain for the toughest test of the day. HQ, babies. A whirlwind of facts is about to hit you. And uh, you gotta go in with courage and don't be rattled. If you can, if you, you can, if you can handle this, you might just be invincible. That's what I was trying to say. And now, there's nothing to it but to HQ it with question number one. Q1. Wheel of Fortune is closest in format to which pencil and paper game? Hangman, Sudoku, or Tic-Tac-Toe? What is it going to be? Oh. The show premiered in 1975, so don't say we didn't give you time to figure this out, okay? Trying to guess words and phrases a letter at a time is the whole object of Hangman. But the stakes on Wheel of Fortune are lower. Hangman can end in death. Everybody knows that. 40,510 players got that one right. Hangman is the answer to question one. That's how it's done. Y'all ready for some more fun? Well, here we go with Q2. Where would you cook potatoes au gratin? Boiling water, deep fryer, or oven? You got this, baby. All right, these are all used to cook potatoes, but au gratin is where it's got a browned crust of bread and cheese on top. I'm making myself hungry. The special kind you get from oven baking. 39,407 players got that one right. It's very hard to get a brown crust from boiling. That's some strange water you got there. If it's getting your food brown and crusty. Q3 in the place to be. In E equals MC squared, what does the M stand for? Magnetism, mass, or momentum? You can spend years fully understanding it, but a good start is breaking down the letters to where E is energy, and of course M is mass. 
Boom shakalaka, 37,551 of y'all got that right. Squaring the velocity of light is a little trickier. Mass babies, yeah. Q4, knocking on your door. Ruby Bridges is particularly known for breaking segregated boundaries where? Bathrooms, schools, or trains. What's the groovy? Time is up! She pushed equality forward just by having the courage to show up. Ruby Bridges has shown up in some famous photos and a famous painting, single-handedly desegregating a school at age six. Childhood activism is pretty inspiring. 34,047 players got that right. Shout out to Ruby Bridges, y'all. Yeah. Question number five. Children. Which Marvel Cinematic Universe actor also voiced a villain in the series? Benedict Cumberbatch, Bradley Cooper, or Paul Bettany? Time is up. Sometimes the extra you pay for a good actor pays for itself, and you get hero and villain in one package. Like how Doctor Strange and Dormammu came out of Benedict Cumberbatch. That movie was already pretty mind-bending. Benedict Cumberbatch! I loved him so much in Sherlock. And Doctor Strange. 27,455 players got it right. My main man BC was the answer to Q5. Question number six, and it goes a little something like this. By weight, the largest birds known to have existed lived where? Japan, Madagascar, or New Zealand? Come on, y'all got this. Bird nerds? All right, we've got some huge birds on Earth right now, okay? I'm talking like the cassowary, the emu, the ostrich, and some big birds, right? But even they were pretty dinky in the scope of history. The tallest bird ever was in New Zealand. But by weight, you want the elephant bird of Madagascar. Oh my gosh. That was a savage question. Whoa. And they were last seen. Do we have a picture? Look at this. We showed it already. But look at that. I wanted to see it again because it was cool. That's what we think it looked like. Kinda. Last one was seen about a thousand years ago. 12,798 players got it right. Madagascar. I can't get King Julian's voice out of my head. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it! Bum, 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 dee, bum, bum. Q7. <laughs> the genre reggae is believed to have gotten its name from a 1968 single by whom? Jimmy Cliff, Bob Marley, or Toots and the Maytail? Who's it gonna be? All right, this music has caught on big over the past 50 years, but it really caught fire with a single called Do the Reggae. Do the reggae. Yeah. And had a different spelling of reggae by Toots and the Maytals. 15,935 players got that one right. They had to call it something and reggae worked. For sure. Question number eight. No, you're feeling great. Ooh. Which Cosmos series was hosted by Carl Sagan? A Personal Voyage, Possible Worlds, or A Space Time Odyssey? Neil deGrasse Tyson has now hosted two Cosmos series. Uh, the 2014 reboot and a follow-up series seen on Nat Geo. But it all started in 1980 on PBS. Sagan brought us Cosmos, a personal voyage. Great if you're into uh, evangelist music. 11,890 got it right, a personal voyage. Q9, hope you're feeling fine. The one US location where coca leaves are processed to flavor Coca-Cola is where? East coast, west coast, or offshore? All right, there are illegal ways to process coca leaves, so it takes a special license to get away with it on Coke's behalf. And only one place in the nation has that license, a plant in Maywood, New Jersey. 
Can't just give anybody that secret recipe. 11,118 players got that right. East Coast, West Coast, worldwide. East Coast. Good job. Question number 10, my friends. Time to get it in. The first time the Empire State Building was lit to promote a movie, what color was it? Blue, green, or yellow? Ooh, I like this cue. Little fun fact here. It's uh, pretty recent that the building's lent itself to promotions instead of the usual holidays and tribute lightings. The first time was in 2007 to let everybody know about the Simpsons movie. I bet you can guess the color is yellow. <laughs> Five thousand. Oh my God! Just a pretty savage question. Yes, yellow fellows. Five thousand one hundred ninety-seven players got that right at Q10. We got two more questions till the jackpot. So what do you say we jack it on up to get it on out to you? <laughs> question eleven. People are saying it looked green. Nah. That's yellow, for The Simpsons. Okay, Q11. <laughs> Here's another question about colors. Which nation's name contains a reference to the color red? Eritrea, Paulu, or Rwanda? All right, you never know what a country will be named after. Might be the citizens, the local wildlife, or a nearby natural feature like uh, the Red Sea. That's how Eritrea did it. It's from the Greek name for the sea. 6,131 players are moving on to the final question of the game, baby. <laughs> Yeah, Q12, let's get it. Woo the Archimedean solid called a truncated octagon has no faces in what shape? Hexagon, square, or triangle? A truncated octahedron. We've talked before about the five platonic solids, but later on Archimedes came up with a collection of 13. Some of them have uh, decagons, some have octagons, and a lot have triangles, but not the one we're talking about, baby. We have 2,166 winners of HQ Trivia! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about on a Thursday. Yeah, you did it. Good job. Do a little flip. Whee! I said we because I pictured a bunch of you doing flips at home. Shout out to Francine5, Muller007, RKD, Annex45, Kinder82, Rosacy, Malaka, <laughs> DFGG, FFGG, uh, Lukagar, Bugsy, Kalak, Cram, Lloyd Clatt, uh, Tavis D, Barack12, Super32, Angela D, Pink Galaxy, Dave F. Tug. Gwen. Just to name a few, $2.31 going out to all our beautiful winners. Y'all are so smart. Yes, y'all. You and you played your part. As always, a wonderful job by all of your winners. We'll have to go even tougher next time, okay? But I have a feeling that you're going to be prepared. And if you didn't go all the way, we thank you for just showing up. So come on back. We're doing this every night. The charity again is Thorn, making the internet a much safer and happier place for kids. Head to thorn.org to see their great work and help them out if you can. Until next time, I'm Matt Richards asking, how about the government makes the stimulus payments in GameStop stock? Then they'll have to buy a ton of it, that'll raise the value, and we'll all be set for years!